So let's start with this one. Uh, it's hot air at atmospheric pressure and at an 85 Celsius enters a 10 meter long uninsulated square duct of cross section 0.15 by 1.15 that pass through the attic of a house at a rate of 0.10 meter cubic meter per second. Um, the duct is observed to be nearly isothermal at 70 Celsius. Determine the exit temperature of the air and the rate of heat loss from the duct to the air space in the attic. The properties of air at 85 Celsius and one atmosphere are given. So you don't have to look for properties in uh, your textbook. And this is more or less what you expect in your exam. In your exam, I'm going to provide you film um, or properties at the film temperature already. Okay, so you don't have to look um, or interpolate for properties. That's something that you have been practicing so far in your homework. Your first step would be to get the Reynolds, right? To, to check which nozzle correlation will fit for solving this convection problem. But you need to realize that you have a square duct. So it's different um, than a circular cross-sectional area. That means you need to get first an hydraulic diameter for this square duct. And then use the hydraulic diameter to get the Reynolds number. And knowing the Reynolds number, you can decide what type of flow you are dealing with, either turbulent or laminar, and then uh, choose one of um, the correlations we have available for the nozzles. What is the equation for the nozzle? Well, first of all, you need to realize that uh, in order to get the equation for the nozzle, you need to get first the Reynolds, right? Because depending on both the geometry and the Reynolds number, you can choose a nozzle correlation to get the heat transfer coefficient. We need to realize that in order to calculate the Reynolds, we need to first get an hydraulic diameter. Why? Because we have a square duct. We have other than a circular cross-sectional area. So when we have a cross-sectional area that is not a um, circular cross-sectional area, we correct the diameter with the hydraulic diameter. And the formula for the hydraulic diameter is four times the cross-sectional area divided by the wet perimeter, right? And the cross-sectional area, so four times A to a square, we're dealing with a square, right? Divided by four A. So it, it means that only A or 0.15 meters is that hydraulic diameter. We are going to calculate then the Reynolds number using the volumetric flow rate. And I gave you an equation to calculate the Reynolds with both the volumetric flow rate or the mass flow rate. I'm using the volumetric flow rate. Why? Because we are given the volumetric flow rate. So four times the volumetric flow rate divided by pi square, um, the, sorry, the hydraulic diameter, multiply it by the kinematic viscosity that we read from the book, right? And I already gave to you as data. Uh, so we have 40K more or less, 40K um, Reynolds, which is bigger than 10,000, means that we are dealing with a turbulent flow, right? And I'm going to assume that I have already a fully developed turbulent flow, that I'm not in the entrance. I'm not having any entrance effect. So um, I'm in fully developed turbulent flow, that's just an assumption. And I'm going to assume that I'm dealing with a smooth pipe. Why I can assume I have a smooth pipe? Because I don't know the material the pipe is made of, right? The problem is not giving us any hint of what kind of material or what is the status of the pipe, right? Or the, or the dock, sorry. Yeah, if the problem tells you is um, a new stainless steel polished surface, okay, you can get the roughness. And with the roughness, right, you can get uh, the relative roughness, that is the um, roughness divided by the hydraulic diameter, and go to Moody chart or use Halland equation to get the friction factor, right? And use a nozzle correlation that involves the correction of the friction factor. Since we don't know anything about the pipe, I'm going to say, I'm going to assume that this is a smooth pipe. That allows me to use D2's Boedler equation. It's equation 7.61 in your textbook. And again, it is not in this table. It is not in table 7.3 for summary of internal convection nozzles, because this is a very important equation, okay? So you add by hand your equation 7.61, the D2's Boedler. 
And uh, that equation is no cells equals 0 0.023 Reynolds to the 0.8 brand to the N, where N is for cooling the fluid. N is 0.3 for cooling the fluid. And N equals 0.4 when you are heating the fluid. So when you write your equation, your Ditus Boedler in table 73, please, please add that note. N equals 0.3 when uh, cooling the fluid and N equals 0.4 when heating the fluid, okay? Don't forget to add that. Um, so I have the Reynolds, I have the brands that I read from tables and I can get the nozzle. So I get a nozzle of around 100 in this case. Knowing the nozzle, I can know the convective heat transfer coefficient because the convective heat transfer coefficient is the um, thermal conductivity of the material times the nozzle divided by hydraulic diameter. Remember, all the, all the calculations should be done with hydraulic diameter because if this is a non-circular cross-section. We get around 20 for the um, heat transfer coefficient. And now I'm going to get the mass flow rate. Why? Because the problem has the bulk uh, exit temperature. And the problem is saying also that we have an isothermal surface. And this is another important equation we reviewed during class time. How to solve for bulk outlet, right? Because typically we know the wall temperature or we can measure it. We know the bulk in temperature because we know what we are inputting in our pipe, right? So typically this is an equation that we use to calculate the bulk outlet temperature for isothermal surface. And the problem says that our duct is maintained at a constant temperature of 70 Celsius. So I just need mass flow rate, right? Since I have the volumetric flow rate, I just multiply the volumetric flow rate times density and I have mass flow rate that I need in this equation. The rest I have it ready to put in here. So after putting numbers to this equation, uh, we get that the bulk outlet temperature is around 74. And knowing this bulk temperature, we can just uh, use um, a general energy balance to calculate the heat transfer rate. How do we know that uh, this is force and not natural? Um, well, uh, just by looking at the problem, you, have, you are given a velocity. The, you are given a velocity for the flow or the fluid to move. Typically, natural convection is observed in atmosphere, right? When we are not forcing the fluid to move. When we, when we have air ducts, we are, we are forcing the, the air to move through those ducts, right? Um, natural convection is much more important in natural phenomena when we have different temperatures that give us different densities and that gives that velocity, that low velocity. If at certain point you are not sure, not sure of what's going on or if natural convection becomes important, what you need to do is to calculate the Reynolds and the Grasshoff and check the relationship between the Reynolds and the Grasshoff. And that will tell you if you can disregard natural or if you need to include natural or if natural is more important than force. That would be in the a scenario where you are kind of um, lost or when you cannot visualize what's going on, what's going on, the best idea is to calculate the Grasshoff and the Reynolds and compare them. Um, it's related to pumping power and pressure drop. Uh, there are two terms that we are reviewing for force convection uh, that we check in our fluid mechanics course or you check in our fluid mechanics course. And we solve some problems like this in class. We calculate pressure drop and pumping power. Uh, so we have water at 40, cell, so 40 Fahrenheit, sorry. And we have the density and the viscosity given is flowing in a 0.15 inch diameter, 30 feet long pipe, steadily at an average velocity of three feet per second. Determine the pressure drop and the pumping power required to overcome this pressure drop. Yep, that's the friction factor. And after applying Darcy friction factor, you just multiply by volumetric flow rate and that will give you the pumping power requirement. So from the Reynolds number with the data I provide you, um, we get a Reynolds number of around 
less than 2300, uh, that is laminar flow. Uh, if you are dealing with laminar flow, the friction factor becomes 64 over the Reynolds. Uh, that's for circular ducts. Textbooks, typical in fluid mechanics, you just have a lot of different, this is for circular cross-sectional area, but in your fluid mechanics book, you have a table of the friction factor when it is laminar for a square, for triangular, for hexagonal. And what is changed is change only this number. Instead of being 64, it's like 54 or 34, or this change with the geometry. But for circular geometries, it's approximated at 64 over the Reynolds. So if it is laminar, the friction factor can be easily approximated as 64 over the Reynolds. If it is turbulent, you need to know the roughness of the pipe because in the y-axis of the Moody chart, you need the relative roughness. That is the roughness divided by the diameter. You need the Reynolds in the x-axis so you can read the friction factor in the other y-axis. That's the case of turbulent flow. And even, if I remember correctly, uh, Moody chart should have also a line for a smooth pipe. And if you don't want to use the Moody chart, there's the Halland equation. The Halland equation can help you to calculate also the friction factor for turbulent flow. So now that you have friction factor, you use the Darcy equation, right? That is this equation I have here. And I, so I just put numbers here and I include here my GC conversion factor to change my natural units, right? In con to convex conventional units. Uh, it's just, it's just dimensional analysis. And have finally my delta P in pound force per area or per feet square. Now that I know my delta P in pound force per feet square, I uh, just can multiply that number by the volumetric flow rate, right? So I need to know first my volumetric flow rate. So in order to know my volumetric flow rate, I have my velocity times the cross-sectional area of the pipe. Since it's a square pipe, is pi d squared over four. That gives me, right, uh, flow of 0 0.00368 cubic feet per second, so my volumetric flow rate. Now that I know my volumetric flow rate, I just multiply it by the delta P value I got before, and I got 0.21 uh, pound four feet second. And I just convert to watts because watts is the most common unit, right? So this is just the conversion factor from uh, pound four feet second to watts, so 0.29 watts. Again, you can leave the answer like this. I mean, I just make the conversion to uh, put it in units that are more conventional to use. Uh, let's solve another one. Uh, we have a three meter long cylinder with a diameter of four centimeter and is exposed to a cross flow of 20 Celsius atmospheric air at a velocity of six meters per second. If the surface temperature of the cylinder is 85 Celsius, find the convective heat transfer from the cylinder. Use the following properties of air in your calculations. These properties were obtained at the film temperature. So you have the Brandt equals the Brandt wall, uh, the thermal conductivity and the viscosity. So first step as always would be to get um, the Reynolds number in order to determine uh, which is the nozzle number you are employing for this long cylinder. And as you know the nozzle, well, you can get the H and then the heat transfer. And so in this problem, well, first you determine the film temperature and read the properties at the film temperature, but I already gave you that, so you don't have to do it. Um, then you get the Reynolds number, right? So I get 1.29 times to the 10 to the fourth, right? Uh, with these error numbers, I need to go to my table 6.6, .6, right? Because we are in cross flow and it's a long cylinder. So if you see uh, your page 414 in table 6.6, .6, you have the first correlation given there is long circular cylinder norm normal to a gas or liquid flow. So it says correlation number, equation, sorry, C Reynolds to the M, Brand to the N, Brand divided by Brand wall or Brand surface to the one fourth. And it says C table 6.1 to get C, M, and N, right? 
So we need to go to that table and with the Reynolds number, right, determine C, M, and N. And remember that if we have brands less than one, N equals 0.37, right? So that is uh, what, what we can get from the table. So we have everything, put Reynolds and our uh, constant C, M, and N in the nozzle equation. Uh, we get a nozzle of around 67 with the nozzle, the H of around 47. And finally, with Newton's cooling law, um, we get around 1161.5 watts. So as you can see, the, uh, the same methodology is followed, right? First, we get the properties at the film temperature. Then we get our Reynolds number. After the Reynolds, we choose from the knowing the geometry and the Reynolds from tables, which is the appropriate nozzle correlation we can use. And from the nozzle, we get the convective heat transfer coefficient. And finally, uh, knowing the convective heat transfer coefficient, we get the heat transfer rate. Uh, next, I want to go through this problem with you guys. It's a it's example. No, it's not an example. It's a problem in your textbook. So it's problem 7 and 13 in your textbook. Um, so this problem 713, if you want to look at, is in the in the end of the chapter. You have the statement there. Um, so it gives you this equation for the nozzle that is recommended by Hausen to force convection heat transfer in fully developed laminar flow through tubes. And it says compare the values of the nozzle number predicted by Hausen's equation, that is this one for Reynolds 1000, prank one, and L over D, or the ratio of the length to diameter of 2, 10, and 100, respectively, with those from two other appropriate equations or graphs in the text. So the idea is that you compare, when using different nozzle equations, how your values are going to change. That's the main idea of this problem. And I'm going to show you how to do it for LD over two only, okay? Um, so we are just focusing in L over two, e L over D, sorry, equals two. And I decide to use it says, uh, use any other appropriate equations in the graphs of the text. So we are using figure 7, 12, and theater tape correlation. So we know that we have fully developed laminar flow is given in the problem statement. Um, the nozzle number correlation is shown above, one of them. The Reynolds is uh, 1,000, the plant equals 1. And we are going to focus on the uh, length divided by, by by diameter equals 2. OK? Uh, so if you see, if we start solving for L over 2 with the Hausen equation given here, uh, we get a nozzle equa uh, sorry a nozzle uh, value of 13.1. So just putting numbers into this equation. So page 451 and figure 712. So this is also for tubes. It's a it's a plot that you can get to get the nozzle, right? For tubes. But this plot is divided in two areas, right? If you check to uh, your left side, you have very long tubes to the left, right? And very short tubes to the right, right? So um, we need to check first which kind of uh, curve or which is the curve we need to use to read to get the nozzles, okay? So in this case, we are evaluating, we are focusing in the case or L over D equals two. So we need to check first the velocity entrance region for laminar flow because if the problem says we are dealing with laminar flow. Remember those entrance regions that you uh, went through in your fluid mechanics curve? The entrance region is when you can have a mix of different, of different regimes, right? Like maybe you are in transition regime and you haven't reached fully the turbulent. That's the entrance region, right? In a pipe, in terms of the fluid, right? So we need to first evaluate with L over D the velocity entrance region with equation 7.7 .7 for laminar flow that is in your page 437. And this equation is X fully developed divided by diameter uh, 
for laminar flow equals 0 0.05 the Reynolds. So if we apply this equation 0 0.05 the Reynolds, we get 50, okay? The same thing we do for the thermal entrance, and we use uh, equation 7a to calculate the thermal entrance, and the thermal entrance is 0 0.05 the Reynolds multiplied by the Brandt. So 0 0.5, 0 0.05 the Reynolds multiplied by the Brandt give us 50. So we have 50 for both entrance phenomena, okay? So for laminar flow in our circular tube, the entrance effect may be appreciable for as length as 100 hydraulic diameters from the entrance. And that's a rule of thumb that you learn from your fluid mechanics. Um, so the entrance effects are appreciated as a length as much as 100 hydraulic diameters from the entrance. Since we have 50, right, we have 50 here, right? We are not fully in, we are in not fully developed. And since we are not in fully developed, we are assuming that we are dealing with a short duct because we already have those entrance effects, right? Because of these 50 that we got here. Then we can read from our plot because now we know where to read for short tubes. So all of these determine the entrance effects is just to know if we can approximate as a short tube or a long tube. Obviously, in a short tube, you are going to have all those entrance effects, right? Especially if you haven't reached the length, the roll of thumb length of 100 hydraulic diameters. Remember, after 100 hydraulic diameters, you, you still feel the entrance effect. We are in 50, right? So we approximate as a short tube. So let's read in our plot, right? So. If you see, we need to calculate the Reynolds times the plant and the diameter divided by length to get the x-axis, right? In your table, the x-axis is this one. Reynolds times plant d over L tends to the minus two, right? And that gives us a value of five. So locate five in your graph and choose the line short duct approximation and then go to the left to read the nozzle and you should read below 15 like 14 right which if you compare is not bad with the number we calculate here with house and correlation house and correlation give us 13 the graph give us 14 okay so that means there are different ways to get the nozzles. All these correlations, there are different correlations, and at the end we will have the same, um, the same uh, or similar nozzles. So finally, I'm going to use the cedar tate correlation to compare with the third way to calculate the nozzle for LD over two. So the cedar tate correlation is equation 7.42, page 458 in your textbook, can be applied because Brand equals one, that implies that the fluid is a liquid. So this is the Cedar Tate, and putting numbers to the Cedar Tate here, I get a value of the nozzle of 14.4, okay? So as you can see, for L over D here in this table, using the house and correlation given, we get a nozzle of 13.1. Using the figures 7.10 approximating as a short tube, we get 14 and the theater takes 14.4. Okay, so there's not only one correlation that applies. You can use a table, you can use um, different, different correlations that you have available in your textbook and in the tables.